He can walk, talk, stab, shoot, and maim. Since the late 80s, the murderous Chucky doll has remained an essential part of horror's iconography. Today, we're ranking the Foul Mouth Toy's most famous film appearances from worst to best. Rounding out a trilogy of films in 1991, Child's Play 3 wasn't exactly Chucky's greatest moment. The story had so many parallels to the first two, with Chucky once again tracking down his obsession from the previous films, Andy Barkley. Now a teenager, Andy is in military school and Chucky wants to complete their unfinished business. The film showcases a bit of corporate greed, as the toy company behind the good guy dolls seeks to capitalize off the toy despite the bad press that resulted from the Barkley incident. The factory and assets are still in hand, it seems, and the toys seem to be very profitable for the company before the incident. So, unfortunately for his victims, Chucky was born again. Instead of following through with the objective of transferring his soul into teenage Andy's body, Chucky realizes he has a new body and can once again possess the first person who learns his true nature. Therefore, he shifts focus to an eight-year-old cadet attending the same military school by the name of Ronald Tyler. When Andy understands what's happening and sees a good guy doll, he does everything in his power to protect young Ronald from becoming Charles Lee Ray's host. Ultimately, Andy overpowers the serial-killing doll by throwing him into a fan that slices him to bits. Of course, after seeing Chucky's previous demise, audiences never believed that his destruction here would keep the deranged killer down forever. Of all the films in the Child's Play franchise, Seed of Chucky may have taken itself the least seriously, showing us that plastic dolls can conceive and bear children. Chucky and his former flame Tiffany set out to start life as a family once they learn of their son Glenn, who recently escaped an abusive master. Tiffany, voiced by Jennifer Tilly, wants a normal family life, but Chucky can't resist the urge to maim and murder, even expressing that he wants her son to partake in the family business. I'm not gonna let you poison our son's mind with your touchy-feely 12-step bull****. Glenn, however, isn't quite like his old man. Instead, he's kind-hearted and benevolent. For this reason, Tiffany makes Chucky agree to stop killing. However, crossing his fingers behind his back, Chucky shows us what we already know. A leopard never changes its spots. In an astonishing turn of events, Glenn turns out to actually have two personalities. One is the timid Glenn shown earlier in the film, and the other is the ravenous soul of his sister Glenda, who is more than happy to spill a little blood. When Glenn sees what his sister has done while in control of his body, it's a horrifying revelation to him, but an unsurprising one for the audience given the young doll's parentage. Aside from voicing Tiffany, Jennifer Tilly also plays a dramatized version of herself in the film. After her character becomes pregnant with Chucky's child, the pregnancy speeds up at a rapid pace thanks to the magic at work behind Chucky's entire being. In a rather fun coincidence, she bears twins, a boy and a girl. In the final moments of the film, we learn that Tiffany, Glenn, and Glenda have all transferred their souls into Jennifer and her two infant children, while Chucky has an epiphany and decides he enjoys being an evil doll. In defense of his mother, Glenn decapitates Chucky in his first truly violent act. However, the audience once again knows better than to assume this is the end of the murderous doll. Chucky always returns. The precursor to Seed of Chucky, Bride of Chucky, depicted the origins of Chucky and Tiffany's murderous relationship. After Chucky's destruction at the end of Child's Play 3, a human Tiffany bribes and murders a police officer in order to obtain the pieces of Chucky's body and reassemble them. An ex-girlfriend of Charles Lee Ray, Tiffany performs some voodoo incantations to try to revive her former lover. She manages to bring Chucky's soul back into the doll, and, alive once again, he proceeds to kill the first person he sees. Still enamored with Ray's spirit, Tiffany brings up an engagement ring that was found on his body, assuming he was planning to propose to her. Not the romantic type, Chucky laughs off the idea and states that the ring was simply something he stole. Angered by his callous disregard for her love and loyalty, Tiffany traps him in a cage, but Chucky frees himself and electrocutes her while she's in a bathtub. He then places her soul in a bride doll she had in her possession. With her death, Chucky creates a new partner in crime as they both seek out human bodies to take over. The film took on a more humorous approach than its predecessors, focusing on black comedy instead of the frights and jump scares of the past Child's Play films. Stabbings went out with Bundy and Dahmer. You look like Martha Stewart with that thing. Whereas Andy was a lead character in the prior films, the narrative in Bride of Chucky is focused on the dolls themselves, and their unsuspecting human prey amount to only supporting roles. In the second Child's Play film, the ever-persistent Play Pals company reassembles the good guy doll with tight quality control in an effort to show the public that no harm was done due to the events of the previous film. Unfortunately, one of the workers is electrocuted during the rebuilding process, and the CEO forcefully tells his underlings to suppress the event. Meanwhile, Andy is forced to live in a foster home when his mother is institutionalized in a mental treatment facility after the horrific events of the first film. Of course, Chucky escapes the Play Pals factory after the company unknowingly resurrects him, and he quickly tracks down Andy to try to take over his body. Chucky eventually attempts to complete the ritual of transferring his soul to Andy. However, he realizes he is incapable of doing so and angrily sets out to kill the little boy. 
Andy, with the help of his foster sister Kyle, eventually gets the better of the evil doll. Child's Play 2 was considered a major success, and even took the top spot at the box office in its first weekend in theaters. Due to the success of the first two films, Chucky was officially solidified as a horror icon with a bright future ahead, at least in theory. Cult of Chucky was the second of two direct-to-video films in the franchise following Curse of Chucky. Somewhat surprisingly, it turned out to be a perfectly decent horror film despite never being screened in theaters. Following Seed of Chucky, the series shifted back into horror mode with Chucky once again acting as the only possessed doll hiding in the shadows. Following the events of Curse of Chucky, an adult Andy Barkley keeps the head of Chucky on a pike, taking pleasure in constantly torturing the crazed killer within the doll as retribution for his sins. What Andy doesn't know is that Chucky has found a way to split his soul among multiple dolls. For the four years following the events of the previous film, Nika Pierce spent her days in a mental institution, convinced that a doll murdered her family. Her psychiatrist, Dr. Foley, convinces her that she committed the murders in an episode of Psychosis and that her memories of Chucky were merely a way for her brain to cope. After the doctor introduces a good guy doll into his patient group in an effort to help aid in her healing process, funny business begins all over again. To make matters worse, two more good guy dolls are eventually introduced to the facility and Chucky possesses all of them. The idea of multiple Chuckies causing havoc and wreaking terror on the patients within the asylum offers unapologetic primal thrills and brought the franchise into new territory. In an interview with Collider, writer and director Don Mancini stated, I didn't really know how I would do it dramatically, but I just knew that the image of a bunch of Chuckies was cool. I felt that at this point in the franchise, it was time to do it. The new direction worked, garnering the film largely positive reviews from critics. Listen to you. You sound like Hannibal Lecter. Can't believe they canceled that show. In the age of reboots and remakes, Child's Play landed one of its own in 2019. The story revisited the Barkley family made famous by the original 1988 film, but the remake did away with the serial killer soul trapped in a doll's body trope and modernized the premise by examining AI technology gone awry. Instead of the good guy dolls, the company has now introduced the buddy dolls. While they look remarkably similar to the original Chucky doll, they feature added robotic elements. Part of the new iteration of the doll's revolutionary technology is that it is supposed to imprint on the child, learning its behavior so they can play together. The start of the film sees a disgruntled factory worker get fired. He ends his life, but before doing so, he sticks it to the company in a final act by unlocking the safety protocols around one of the dolls in the production line. This decision allows its AI to operate free of restriction, ultimately resulting in chaos. At first, Chucky seeks Andy's approval, but he comes to believe he can best protect Andy through violent means. Eventually, Andy comes to realize that the doll has blood on his hands, and he has to figure out how to rein in the murderous robot. As one would expect, everything gets out of hand, and the final moments of the third act turn into a bloody nightmare befitting the Child's Play name. Nearly a decade after the release of Seed of Chucky, Don Mancini breathed new life into the serial-killing doll franchise with Curse of Chucky. The film took the little slasher back to his horror roots by placing him in the home of a new unsuspecting family, the Pierces. After receiving the doll by mysterious means, the Pierce's matriarch, Sarah, dies under strange circumstances. While her passing was ultimately ruled as a suicide, her daughter, Nika, suspects the doll after doing her own research on Good Guy and their connection with serial killer Charles Lee Ray. Chucky soon makes himself known, and Nika does everything within her power to stop him. In typical Chucky fashion, however, the majority of the family bites the dust. Before attempting to kill Nika, Chucky tells her the reason he came to her home and murdered her entire family. Prior to the events of the original film, Charles Lee Ray was infatuated with Nika's then-pregnant mother, Sarah. Ray eventually kidnapped Sarah to have her for himself, and as the police arrived on the scene, he stabbed her, causing Nika to be born handicapped. It was after this murder that the police pursued Ray and cornered him in the toy store where he was shot and killed, but not before transferring his soul into a Chucky doll. All of this clever revisionism is meant to present the classic 1988 film in a new light with an expanded universe. These creative decisions were evidently successful, as it has become one of the most critically renowned installments of the franchise. The horror of Chucky all began in 1988 with the release of the original Child's Play. The film's enduring legacy is largely due to its terrifying twist on horror, an evil child's toy transforming from a charming plaything to an unsettling murder machine. Hi! It's me, Chucky. What do you think? While the idea of a possessed doll wasn't entirely new at the time, it hadn't quite made it into the mainstream either. After dedicating a feature-length film to the concept, audiences were shocked by the trash-talking, bloodlusting doll powered by a soul attempting to cheat death, but unable to resist its intrinsic urge to kill. After murderer Charles Lee Ray meets his own demise at the hands of pursuing law enforcement, he grabs the nearest object, a good guy doll, and performs a voodoo spell, transferring his soul into its body before his own mortal flesh expires from its wounds. Of course, young Andy Barkley is the unfortunate recipient to the corrupted doll. 
Chucky reveals himself to Andy, stopping at nothing to transfer his soul into the child's body while trying to kill anyone who gets in his way. The film received high praise from renowned critics such as Roger Ebert, who wrote, Child's Play is a cheerfully energetic horror film of the Slam Bang School, but slicker and more clever than most. The movie also made big money at the box office despite carrying a limiting R rating, becoming one of the highest grossing films of 1988. Child's Play left an indelible mark on the horror genre, and all these decades later, we all know that Chucky will be back again, a true best friend till the end.